Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi man wala. Respected brothers in Islam and sisters in Islam, today was the first day out of 37 times that I've been to UK now that I was stopped at the gates of your beloved country, mashallah. And I was stopped because the customs officials, may Allah <coughs> uh, bring them to Islam, they asked me what sort of person comes 23 kilometer, 23 hours uh, in a grueling flight from Australia all the way to UK only to stay another 23 hours and then to go back another 23 hours straight back to Australia because I'm only here for less than 24 hours. What I couldn't explain to him was that wallahi even if this event was only for a few hours, two to three hours, even then I would still come. Such is the importance that I put in what we're trying to achieve at this point in time in our era. And inshallah ta'ala, hopefully this little bit of dedication will show to you the real reason why this is so important to me and to all these other instructors and teachers and mashayikh that are, that are in front of you. My brothers and sisters in Islam, it is a truly terrible thing to be able to see but to have no vision. It's a terrible thing to consider that the keys in your pocket, the, eye, the, the glasses on your eyes, the, the pen in your pocket, the car that you drive, everything to have a purpose, but for your life to not have a specific purpose for which you were created and designed for. Yes, if I were to ask you all what is the purpose of your life, you could easily rattle off certain verses of the Quran saying that, yes, we are here to worship Allah. And very easily you could rattle off a couple of other hadith about yes, we are here because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to worship Him. You could easily do that, but this is, not the, this is not the question at all. We all know we are here to worship Allah. We all know we were created to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we know that there are multiple ways of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we know what exactly our life purpose is? And do we know exactly where we are headed and what we are going to achieve? It is a truly terrible thing, my brothers and sisters of Islam, to get into the car. It is a terrible thing to get into the car and to start driving and to not know where you're going. So everyone gets into the car, right, we're all going to start driving. So where are we going? I don't have the faintest idea. It's a terrible thing to be leading a life with no destination, no end point. You have the faintest idea what you want to achieve with your life. You have the faintest idea what your vision is with your life. And it, is a true, it is truly a terrible thing for a person to not know what people will say at the end of his life. If I were to give you a piece of paper right now and say, brothers and sisters, write down right now what you want people to say, what witnesses people will give upon your death. Because we know Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the authentic hadith, Antum shuhadaullahi fil ard. You are the witnesses of Allah in this earth. So the way the people will witness about you when you pass away will be the witness that is accepted by Allah. And based on that, Jannah will be written for you or Jahannam will be written for you. And the witnesses of people will be accepted for you. It is for this reason, it is, it is a terrible thing, my friends, to lead a life in front of you of 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, and to have no idea, the faintest idea what you're trying to achieve. But Allah, if I asked you what sort of house you want to buy, you have some idea. What sort of wife you want to marry, you have some idea. What sort of degree you want to do, if you don't have an idea, your parents have an idea. But you have the faintest idea what you want to achieve with your life. And by Allah, if we continue to be like this, if we continue to be people without a, a clear purpose and with a clear, clear vision, then ultimately know this of a surety. If you are not planning your, your future and vision, then ultimately someone else is. By Allah, someone else already is planning your future. And someone else already has planned. If you are not the one who is in control of it, then someone else is. It is for this reason why Muhammad Iqbal, the great poet, he said in that amazing statement, the people who do not know a vision or do not have a purpose or a vision are led by the qadr of Allah on this earth. But the people of purpose and the people of true visions, they are the qadr of Allah on this earth. They are the qadr of Allah. 
Ask yourself this question. Are you the Qadr of Allah on this earth or are you just led by the Qadr of Allah? Are you a person who has thought about where you want to be, where you want to go, and as a result planned upon that? Or are you a person who has the faintest idea, leading life just like we do these days, da'wah, we just want to do some da'wah, just some brothers getting together, we're just going to do some da'wah. Right brother, what are you going to do? Just some da'wah, just some da'wah. And so we have multitude of da'wah organizations now that just want to do some da'wah. And walhamdulillah and, and Allahul Musta'an, we are only here today because we plan to be here. Because we didn't plan any better, would you agree? Would you also further agree that lacking a plan for good health is in itself a plan for bad health? Would you also agree that planning, that failing to plan is itself a plan to fail? And this is all truth. We know this logically in our mind. Then why is it that we have yet to decide a future for ourselves? Where are the visionaries of our people and our leaders in UK and of the Muslims around the world that have a vision about where Muslims should be in the next 10 to 5 to 20 to 30 to 100 years? Where are these people? Will they not show themselves the true leaders of this humanity? Because truly we were made to lead, lead mankind. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas. Ibn Abbas said, you are the best of mankind, created to lead mankind. Do you know what you have been created for? Have you been created on this earth to be like Umar? Have you been created on this earth to be like Khalid and Walid? Have you been created on this earth to serve Allah and to earn His eternal pleasure? Like the examples of Abdullah bin Abbas. Or have you been created on this earth to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like the examples of Aisha radiallahu anha and others? What I'm asking you, my brothers and sisters in Islam, is not to know a very general, have a general idea what your purpose is, because our creed and ideology already gives that to us. You are here to worship Allah. You've been created to worship Allah. What I'm asking you is further than that. Which role will you fulfill? And what will you truly achieve on this earth in order to actualize the true purpose of your existence? The Prophet ﷺ knew his purpose. His purpose was to earn the eternal pleasure of Allah and to lead a life of ihsan and to, and to bring mankind to Islam away from the destruction that they're all headed to. It is for this reason when people presented to him to be the king of Quraysh, he knew that this would compromise on his purpose. So he said that statement which, which we should burn in our minds. He said, but Allah, if they were to give me the sun on my right hand and the moon in my left, I would not leave this religion for a single day. Yes, salam. But Allah, we would think twice if, if something like that was given. Tomorrow, if someone said you will be the prime minister of UK, we would think twice about compromising some, some values or some, some parts of our purpose of why we are here. But the Prophet ﷺ was a man of purpose. He knew that a person of purpose will truly achieve it. How many people do we know of from the leaders of mankind these days? You can talk about Malcolm X, you can talk about Mahatma Gandhi, you can talk about any person, a great leader that has achieved something great on this earth. They were all men of purpose. They knew why they were here and they were by Allah going to achieve it. By Allah they were going to achieve it. My brothers and sisters in Islam, the Prophet ﷺ knew the reason why he was created and what specific thing he was going to achieve on this earth. Further to this, based upon the fact that he had a clear idea of his mission in this life, he had a clear vision of where he would like to see this earth and where he would like to see humanity. And he said this many times, I wish that I will be the one with the largest ummah on the day of judgment, he would say. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed a verse in the Qur'an telling us, informing us what the ultimate vision of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَجَةً فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْهُ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا When the victory of Allah comes and His help, and you see mankind entering into Islam in large numbers. Ibn Abbas said this verse was informing Rasulullah وسلم, that his vision would be achieved by the end of his life, at which point death would be near. At which point death would be near. And so this was the vision of Rasulullah that he would lead a life of purpose 
through which mankind would come into Islam in large numbers. And it is precisely this vision that we are here to fulfill. The mission of our era is not to call people to Islam. The mission of our era is far more noble than that. It is to actualize the vision of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on this earth. We are here because we want to earn the eternal pleasure of Allah by striving with excellence to achieve the ultimate vision of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is to have mankind accept Islam. What can be more noble than this? What can be more worthy than this? And if there's anyone who needs to think about why we should be involved with this concept, then this is the true reason. If I were to rewrite it and tell you the exact ultimate purpose of our era, this is it. To earn the eternal pleasure of Allah by striving with excellence to achieve the ultimate vision of Rasulullah which is to have mankind enter into Islam in large numbers. Until this ummah is the largest on the day of judgment. Walhamdulillah. And the Prophet ﷺ was far more practical than just having an ultimate vision. He also had a hundred year vision and he guided us towards that. He said every single hundred years Allah will send to this ummah a, 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 a mujtahid who will renew the ummah, renew the religion for its people. Why would he say this to us if he had not told us to have that vision? That one day we will be that. If not ourselves, then collectively together, we will be that mujtahid who will renew the religion for its people. That's why he told us that. Otherwise, what other purpose does this hadith have? He also had a 25 year vision. Before he passed away, on that, on that frightening day, when the people's hearts had gone to their throats, and Rasulullah was breaking down that unbreakable stone in the, in the trenches of Khandaq, with one strike, he said, Allahu Akbar, Sham is yours. He said, Allahu Akbar, Iraq is yours. What in the world is he saying? He's saying, focus on Iraq. He's saying, focus on Sham. Because, because when you do so, it will be yours. So here he was talking about his vision. He also had a five and ten year vision. How many hadith of Rasulullah do you know of? Oh Allah, give us Makkah. Oh Allah, give us Makkah. Oh Allah, give us Makkah. Oh Allah, return us back to Makkah. So he had... Clear, clear vision, my brothers and sisters of Islam. Clear vision. It is not like how we do these days. Let's just get together and do some dawah. What will we do? Allahu Alam. Where will we go? Allahu Alam. It's like, you know, let's just go into the plane and start. Let the plane go. Where will we go? Who cares? Because it doesn't matter. No, our life is far more worthy than that. Far more valuable than that. My brothers and sisters of Islam, I want you all to be people of purpose and vision. I, I want you to be people who are unnerving on this vision and purpose. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in the Quran, رِجَالٌ لَا تُلْهِيهِمْ تِجَارَةٌ وَلَا بَيْعٌ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِيْتَاءِ الذَّكَاءِ يَخَافُونَ يَوْمًا تَتَقَلَّبُ فِيهِ الْقُلُوبُ وَالْأَبْصَارِ Men of purpose, those who are not driven by the desires of the wealth and of commerce and of trade. They are those who worship Allah, fear Allah, waiting for a day, fearing a day when the eyes will turn inside out from the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Jahannam on that day. They are people of purpose, my brothers and sisters in Islam. Those who are not driven by the pleasures of this earth. They're driven by this ultimate purpose that they're here to fulfill. Be you, this people. Be you people of purpose. Stop leading your life without, without purpose. But Allah, the keys in your pocket have a specific purpose. Tell me now what your purpose is. It is to earn the eternal pleasure of Allah by striving with excellence and ihsan to achieve the ultimate vision of Rasulullah I invite you to have this purpose. And I invite you to have the same vision of Rasulullah that mankind will enter into Islam, true Islam, and hold on to it with their molar teeth so that this ummah becomes the largest on the day of judgment and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa